Hey, Jackie, well, we know a lot about COVID-19, but there's so much that we don't know, like what are the long-term effects? So we brought in our 7 News medical expert, Dr. Cedric McFadden, to join us and give us a little insight. And, and what do we know about the long-term impact? I mean, we hear a lot about the impact on the lungs, sometimes mm -hmm. also the heart. There's a lot mm -hmm. going on with this. So while the, while the symptoms, the telltale symptoms of fever or shortness of breath or cough are very well publicized and known, little is known about what happens as these people recover. Mm -hmm. And that's that makes sense. This is relatively new, right? Um, we, we, we understand that even the initial folks that were diagnosed in China, they're only like three months out from their ordeal. Uh, and so, but we have to imagine that as this virus is overwhelming, that there has to be some long lasting effects to the body itself. And when you talk about the lungs, we did t talk one time about that. We had mm -hmm. a great visual about, about how this kind of really infiltrates your lungs. Yeah, so most people who have the mild disease, they're not going to have any lasting lung disease. Good. But the people that are on the ventilator that need the ICU, they're more likely to develop acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS, which creates that picture where fluid fills in the sacs in the lung spaces. Now what we know from prior coronavirus infections like SARS is that a number of these patients went on to develop pulmonary fibrosis or scarring that makes it hard for them to breathe in the long term. Now we have limited studies right now with this particular virus, but we have to be concerned that perhaps we will see that in maybe a year, five years, or in the future. So we've talked about the lungs, but there are other organs that can be impacted. We hear about some people having a situation where organs shut down and, and they wind up dying, but, but there can be other impacts to organs? There can be. Uh, in one study in China, uh, heart failure was present in up to 12% of patients who had the coronavirus. And these are people that had no or minimal respiratory symptoms. So even if you're not having widespread disease, there can still be issues that can pertain to the heart, whether that be heart failure or myocarditis, which is a type of inflammation of the heart that can lead to problems with arrhythmias and things like that to the heart. But even beside the heart, you can have problems with the kidneys, the liver, the brain. And one particular case report, New England Journal of Medicine, actually showed a patient that developed a blood disorder where they began creating more blood clots. And so, again, a lot wow. of information coming out now. And that's interesting. So these are some of the sort of lesser known, the, not making as many of the headlines as some of these Correct. other issues, but they're wor worrisome. Correct. And, and, and let's not forget, any time you spend any time in the hospital or in the ICU, you're weak. You may have problems that need rehab or physical therapy. And then there's a psychological impact of this whole thing on your body. You know, this is not one size fits all. It can have a wide variety of responses to the body. So if you walk out of, of a scenario of, of your encounter with COVID and your hospitalization and you do have some of these impacts, you know, heart complications or lung issues and breathing issues, do we have any clue how that will play out over time? Well, we have to compare it to what's happened with prior coronas, coronavirus infections like mm -hmm. SARS and MERS and things like that. Um, ultimately, it revolves around having a good pulmonologist, having a good lung doctor and a heart doctor. There may be supplemental oxygen that you need in that period of recovery that may be necessary in the first weeks, months, or maybe even up to a year, as some patients may never regain full functionality of their lungs after this type of infection. And is there anything that they can do to Im improve their chances, you know, of, for example, we, we had a, a wonderful man who, who told us his story. He's on oxygen right now, praying his lungs will recover over time. I mean, is there anything these patients can do to kind of improve their odds? Well, a lot of it falls on what happens when they're in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the critical care doctors, they have a wide variety of techniques they use when they're ventilating the patients to keep the oxygen moving to the parts that need it most to try to help prevent that ARDS from really becoming a bigger issue so that you don't have as much tightening of those air spaces and so that you perhaps in the long term have less of those needs for oxygen. All right. Well, doctor, we appreciate it. We'll have your questions. You can get on the 7 News Facebook page right now, post any medical questions you have about the coronavirus and COVID-19, and we'll get Dr. Cedric yes. McFadden to answer those live at 5 today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're watching Carolina's Family at 4. We're coming right back.